Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome to episode 79 of Game Programming. So it's going to be a pretty quick episode today. I'm warning you straight away, you can probably see by the time, but um, we had a pretty long one yesterday, so I hope that made up for it. But today we're going to talk about two things, um, two quick things. The first one's not really a thing, it's more of a, um, just a quick, uh, just a quick, you know, this, this isn't really a new feature, we're just going to be changing something around. And that is the spawner, instead of adding it into a static location on the level, as you can see, if we launch our game right now, we get um, an explosion of particles over here, right next to the player. Instead of adding it here, because that's kind of, um, well, let's just say it just kind of looks out of place, we're going to add it into a different place. So let's actually just grab this entire add method, and I'm going to cut that. Uh, Control X is the shortcut, Command X on Mac. Um, and we're actually going to go all the way into our player. And in player, in fact, not in player, if we're, we're going to go to that towards our wizard projectile. So into our wizard projectile.java class. Because in this class, that's where we, that's basically the projectiles that we fire when we click. So on collision, okay, over here on the tile collision, what we're going to do essentially with these particles is we're going to add a new spawner on that location. So level dot add new spawner and let's import everything by hitting control shift O. Um, <clears throat> so instead of this, we have to put in level and then everything's cool. Okay. So that's all you have to do. So now if we, and let's maybe drop this down to 50. So if we take a look at this now, when we fire and there's a collision, you can see that it actually, um, there's an, there's an explosion of particles. Now, obviously it's happening in the wrong place right now because we haven't changed the values, but, um, that's all right. We can fix that pretty easily. Uh, so if there is a tile collision at X and Y, let's just make sure that it actually, um, does it at X. Now I think X is in pixel precision, so it's fine to do it this way. So we'll add a new spawner at the location X and Y, make sure we cast them to an integer. Um, and we have an explosion of X and Y. So let's take a look at what that looks like. And as you can see, that's really cool. And you can adjust it finally if you like. But for the most part, we have an explosion of particles when we collide. Cool. Uh, there's a lot of them. And one thing you might notice is they're not disappearing after a while. And that's sort of what we're going to talk about now. We have to set a life for these particles. Because right now, they don't have a life. <laughs> Literally. Um, they live forever and that's a big problem, um, both from a performance point of view and also of course aesthetically. We don't want 1 million particles floating around. If I do this for about 2 minutes straight, your game's going to look like this pretty much forever. Now they do have a speed, so they do eventually move away, but um, still, I mean you have these particles creeping around here for pretty much no reason. So let's get rid of them. Um, the only boundary I guess that we have to kind of work around is the fact that a spawner is a universal um, class that we've created. Okay. And what I mean by that is that not all elements that can be spawned by the spawner have a life. Okay. Some of them last forever, like mobs or last until they're killed or until something happens. Okay. So because of that, we need, we need to think of a way to explicitly specify, oh, okay, we want to give it a life of, well, I don't know, 50, maybe 50 ticks, 50 updates. Yeah. Um, uh, so to do that, uh, there's several ways of doing that, but the best way I've thought about this and the best way to probably do this is actually to create specific spawners for types that kind of renders our whole mob and particle enumeration kind of redundant, but, um, we'll kind of work around that here. So over here in our, um, navigator or in, or in your package explorer, depends which one you use. I personally prefer the navigator because it gives you a much cleaner, um, folder, stru folder structure here rather than bunch of packages. If we take a look here, we just have a bunch of packages. It's not really a hierarchy. Um, whereas in Navigator, we actually have a hierarchy system going on here. So under in entity, I'm actually going to make a new folder called, um, spawner. And I'm actually just going to drag our spawner.java class into that spawner, um, uh, folder. So of course, a bunch of things have changed. So in right here in spawner, we basically just have to add dot spawner because that's the folder that we've moved it to. And Entity will have to re-import that stuff. Um, you'll have to fix a lot of imports. You can see that our problems here are the fact that um, our imports are just wrong. So Control shift o will fix that um, in all the relevant classes. And you can see that we've gotten rid of the majority of them. There's one more in spawn level 
for some reason. I don't think we used anything there, did we? Anyway, um, so now that we've done that, uh, let's actually make a new, new type of spawner, okay? We'll make a spawner called a particle spawner and hit uh, enter. And particle spawner will extend um, our normal spawner, okay? And this is gonna be a really simple class, okay? This is gonna be a really lightweight, really simple class. We're not gonna add like too much code in here at all. What we are gonna add though, um, is we're gonna actually get rid of type, okay? And we're gonna change the type here to, uh, in fact, we don't even have to do that, to type dot um, particle, okay? And the amount, um, we'll leave it whatever the amount is obviously set at. But what we will add in here instead is a, um, a life. So int life will add to this constructor. And what we'll do is this is actually where this stuff sort of happens. So this dot life equals life and we'll set a life private integer life over here. Okay. So again, what we're doing over here is let's make sure the super is our first call. Um, what we're doing here is ensuring that we are actually still using our current constructor with type dot particle. Everything's going smoothly, but we do, we have set a life here, okay, and that's very important. Now, if we go back into spawner, um, the main thing here that kind of changes is the particle, okay. That's all we actually need to do. We just need to specify a life particle thing. So, what we can do is because we're kind of overriding this constructor. Let's actually just get rid of this completely. So instead of this if type equals particle nonsense, let's cut this and let's move it into our particle spawner. Now what I'm gonna change is I'm gonna get rid of this type thing. We don't need that anymore. And um, I'm just gonna set life over here. And that's really the only difference, okay? Again, it's gonna do everything that the particle class did, which is, um, sorry, everything that the spawner class did, which is not much at this point, but again, we may add several things here. Um, because spawners might be visual, like for example, in Minecraft, um, if you have like a, you know, in, 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 a, in a, a dungeon, you have like a, um, an actual cage that spawns, um, creatures, um, monsters. It's been forever since I've played Minecraft, but, um, you know, that kind of thing. So they might be represented by something and we'll put that stuff in the spawner class. But what we've made is basically a type of spawner and that is a particle spawner. So it's the same as a normal spawner with the addition of life. Okay, sweet. So now that we've done that, let's take a look at how that will work. So um, if we check this really quickly, so in other words, um, if we print over here, when a new particle is created, let's just print uh, particle life followed by the life of the particle. Okay, just a simple test here, just to see how this works. And in our projectile class, or specifically our wizard projectile class, um, over here in level.add new spawner, let's change it to level.add new uh, particle spawner. And of course we don't need the spawner type anymore, but instead of, and then after the, um, instead of the, basically instead of the, instead of the type, we're gonna put the life. So let's set the life to maybe about 44, just a specific number. Um, and make sure of course that that is indeed, um, hang on, let's import this first but make sure that that is indeed the correct parameter and yeah, life is the third parameter, so that's correct. Um, if we hit the start button or the debug button and we do this, we can see that there's a bunch of particles with a life of 44. So now that we've done this, yeah, the next step is to actually make that 44 do something. So let's go back into particle, not the interface, our particle class. Um, and all we have to do here in update is something very, very simple. We need to somehow count how long the particle has, has existed for and if its existence, its span, its lifespan is above 44 in this case or above the life that we specify, we need to remove it from the level, okay? So the way we can do that is just make a private integer here called uh, time and we'll set that equal to zero because it will always start at zero and here in update, we'll just increment time. Now if you want to be really specific here, what you could say is that if time is greater than, um, well, let's just say a pretty big number here. Well, okay, let's be reasonable. Integer dot max value um, minus one. In fact, let's just be safe and hit up minus 10 or something. Now let's calculate this properly. Um, if 
time is greater than or equal to uh, integer dot max value minus one, then let's set time equal to zero. And again, this is just a little test here so that our game doesn't either run out of memory or crash, but it is a good practice to implement something like this. Usually we don't have to go up that high because max value is absolutely massive. You can see it's, uh, let's see here, one, two, three, one, two, three, it's 2.1 billion. So that's pretty, that's quite a big number. We definitely don't need to go up that high, but this is, this is what you do if you wanna be safe, okay? So let's get rid of this and actually put in something more humane. So maybe about, I don't know, I don't think we'll have any particles that have a longer life than 7,400, just made that number up, okay? So if time is greater than or equal to 7,400, we'll set it back to zero, just to prevent this integer from becoming overly huge if people decide to um, run the game forever, or for some reason, if the life is huge, okay? So if, um, if our time is greater than or equal to 7,400, we'll set it back to zero. But the idea behind this is that if time is greater than life, that's where we need to kill the particle, okay? And how do, how do we do that? Very, very simple. In entity, if I go back to entity, and this is the first time I think we're removing something. So if I go back to our entity class, um, what, you're, what you see over here is this remove thing. And all that does is set removed equal to true. Now that doesn't do much for us, but if we set removed equal to true, we can then call this is removed method, and it will actually tell us if the particles are removed or not. And from then on, we can be like, okay, well, for all entities that have removed equal to true, let's actually remove them from the list. And I don't think we've done this before, so I will um, elaborate, on, elaborate on this. This isn't going to be a short episode, isn't it? I always say it's going to be. It's never going to be. You guys know this is like me, like a broken record, saying the same thing every time and always letting you down by giving you long episodes. <laughs> Said no one ever. Um, okay, so over here in uh, update, um, in fact, hang on, this is in projectile, in particle, in particle, um, if time is greater than equal to life, we can simply remove. Simple as that. In fact, we don't even need these brackets here. Let's keep it clean. Let's keep it tasteful. Um, so if time is greater than life, remove. Simple as that. Um, now, now, um, eh, yeah, we'll leave it like that for now. I was gonna handle this whole thing, but we, we'll deal with that later. Um, okay, so now let's, take a look at implementing this, because I don't think we have. Um, the best way to do this is in the update in the level class, okay? So what we do over here is we should really check for particles that are dead, or ch check for any entities that are dead and actually remove them, okay? So I'm, I'm actually gonna make a new method here called private void uh, remove, essentially. And this is gonna be private, again, so it's not gonna be, we're not gonna get, get confused with names or anything. And we're just gonna run it over here, okay? So, what we'll do over here is, um, because we've got three lists, which I'm not a big fan of, I might think of a better structure um, than having three separate lists. Maybe, again, a list inside a list, that's what I mentioned last episode, that wasn't a joke. Um, so if entities, what we can do over here is for each of these entities, essentially, if entities.getI.isRemoved dot is removed is equal to true here, then we can actually remove or entities, sorry, entities, entities dot remove I. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're actually removing it from the list. And what happens is when we remove it from the array list, it has nothing else to do, right? It's dead. And so what Java will do is actually delete that object from memory completely, okay? Um, as long as, of course, it doesn't, it's not used anywhere. So um, Java will take, the, take care of that for us uh, automatically, which is nice. Um, if this was C++, for example, you'd have to manually delete that, which isn't such a bad thing, at least, at least you're sure it's gone. Whereas the, um, the collector of garbage in Java can sometimes uh, <laughs> not collect the garbage. Anyway, um, Projectiles dot uh, get i dot is removed. So if it is removed, then entity uh, sorry projectiles dot remove i, and same here. So if 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 particles dot get i dot is removed, oops, particles dot remove. Simple as that. Now let's check. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So if we do this. After a while, these particles, as you can see, disappear. Now, this is very boring, okay? I'm gonna be honest here. This is quite boring. 
these particles just sort of disappear and uh, well, it's cool. And in fact, they probably last a bit too short. I'd say they should probably last longer, but um, that's, that's cool. Um, we'll fix that in a minute. So we'll get rid of this print line statement first of all, because it's still printing the, the life is set to 44. Um, this, is, this is fine, but the problem that I see with this, the one thing that I personally don't like about this aesthetically, they all disappear at the same time. That's not cool. Okay, let's make this cool. Let's make them slightly disappear at a random time. How do we do that? Well, glad you asked, because what we have to do here is actually basically add a bit of variation to them. So we'll still keep life here, but what we'll do is we'll set life, we'll actually add random.nextInt. Uh, let's add a variation of, let's just say, uh, 10, okay? So we'll add a variation of 10 to the life. So let's go 20 and then subtract 10, which is half of that, okay? So it'll uh, choose a random number between uh, zero and 19. And what we'll do with that is we'll basically subtract 10 from it. So then essentially what we'll get is a random, num a random number from around negative 10 to 10, okay? It's probably about negative 10 to nine or something. In fact, it is negative 10 to nine, but um, to positive nine, but that's all right. So let's take, this, let's take a look at this. And now what you can see is they disappear at random times. Okay, now it might be a little bit hard for you guys to see that. So I'm actually gonna put it up here uh, and maybe set this to 25. Um, and so just make it more obvious as you can see that they do in fact disappear at random times. Um, and you can play around with this. You could set this um, differently if you wanted to, but I think that's a, just a really cool feature that you can do. It doesn't take very long and it's pretty, just makes it look nicer, makes it look pretty, okay? So that's how that works. And um, that is how life works for particles in our game programming series in Rain, which is the name of the game, of course. Got to keep reminding myself of that. Um, but anyway, guys, next time we'll take a look at the maths behind uh, actually adding, as, as I said, a floor to, these, to this particle simulation so that they can bounce off the floor and um, actually look just a bit better than just a, an explosion of particles in random directions. But um, until then, guys, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.